So finally, the time has arrived that every developer was desperately waiting for. That is, ChatGPT API access. So today is the day where OpenAI has started introducing ChatGPT's APIs. So this is the official announcement website. And in today's video, what I'll show you is the simplest example of how you can use ChatGPT's API with Python. So without wasting any further time, let's kickstart the video. So in this particular video, I'll go line by line and I'll explain how you can integrate Python with the ChatGPT API. So let's start. If you've never installed OpenAI on your machine, then the first thing that you'll have to do is install OpenAI on your machine. The way you would go about doing that is pip install minus q openai. So let me quickly run this cell. Now that the installation is done, we'll have to import some modules. So the line that I've highlighted imports the openai module, the os module, as well as the json module. So let me quickly run the cell. In order to access the ChatGPT API, what you will require is an API key, which you can find easily on this particular website. So if you don't already have the API key, you will have to go to this website, add an API key and then use it in your use case. I already have an API key, but once you download the API key, it will be in a format like SK something something, SK something something and you'll have and you will have a lot of letters proceeding forward. What I've done is I've saved my API key in form of a JSON file, which is what I'll load in the future section. But for now, all you have to do is once you get the API key, you will say openai.api key and you will replace this with a string that is the actual API key and you're all set to proceed forward. Given that I have just mentioned that my API key resides in this particular JSON file, which is gpt underscore secret underscore key. I'll quickly import this JSON file into a variable called as data. So I'll quickly run the cell. Inside this particular JSON file, there is a key value pair and the key that actually has the API key value is API underscore key, which is what I save into openai dot API underscore key variable. So I'll quickly run the cell. So the piece of code that I've highlighted in this line, the line initializes a list called as messages with a system message. This message sets the behavior of the assistant. The message has two key value pairs, role which is set to system and content which is set to you are a helpful assistant. Now this is the format that ChatGPT has suggested. So I'm kind of going ahead with the default behavior. So I'll quickly run the cell. So in this piece of code is where actual magic will start happening. This line starts an infinite loop. The program will keep running until it's interrupted or terminated. So while true basically will kind of give you an infinite loop that will keep running forever, right? Now the highlighted line prompts a user to input a message by displaying an emoji and a prompt text. The user's message will be stored in the message variable. This particular line checks if the message variable is not empty. If there is a message, this line appends a dictionary with two key value pairs to the messages list. The dictionary represents the user's message and the content key is set to the message entered by the user. When I go to the next line, that is chat underscore completion variable, this line creates a chat underscore completion object using the openai.chatcompletion.create method. The model parameter is set to GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is a pre-trained language model offered by OpenAI. The messages parameter is set to the messages list, which contains the user's input and the system message. When I go to the next line, which is reply equal to chat completion and so on and so forth, what this does is this line extracts the first response generated by the OpenAI API from the chat underscore completion object 
and stores it in the reply variable. The reply variable will contain the text of the response. Finally, to create a chatbot-like environment, in this line, the line will print the response of the chatbot to the console. The text is preceded by an emoji representing a robot and a colon. Finally, in the final line of code, what I do is I append a dictionary with two key value pairs to the messages list. The dictionary represents the chatbot's response. The role key is now set to assistant and the content key is set to the reply variable which contains the text of the chatbot's response. So I've gone line by line. Now let's see how our overall chatbot is performing using ChatGPT's official Python API. So I'll quickly run the cell. Let me ask my first question. Who was the first president of India? The first president of India was Dr. Rajendra Prasad who served from 1950 to 1962. So this is the output that ChatGPT has given me. Now let me try out a different question altogether. When did France win their first football world cup? So this is the response that ChatGPT is giving me. So it's mentioning that France won the world cup second time in 2018. The first time that they won was in 1998. Similarly, I'll ask a cricket related question. So when did India win their first win their first Cricket World Cup. So India won their first Cricket World Cup on 25th June 1983 by defeating the West Indies. So this answer is absolutely correct. So this is what I wanted to show you today. I wanted to show you the power of ChatGPT API and how developers can use it going forward. I've taken a lot of effort in creating this video. I woke up at around 4.30 in the morning to create this video. I'm assuming you liked this video and I'm hoping that you will share this video across with all your developer friends. If you do like the videos that I create on ChatGPT, Python, Machine Learning and Data Science, it would be great if you could subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for watching this video.